Brother Stephen and Lynn for leading us. Uh, we are going to think for a few moments today about when being at church causes God grief. <clears throat> now, you have heard me say for years that uh, uh, we need to be in church. Amen? Amen? And there's a lot of reasons we need to be in church. Uh, God's Word uh, commands it of us, and we know that we come to encourage one another. We come to worship. We come to fellowship with uh, other believers, and we come to give that encouragement to uh, each other that we may not get otherwise. God's Word says, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some. So we have that command to be together. It also says in God's word, where two or three are gathered, Jesus said, where two are gathered in my name, there I am among you. Don't we want to be there, uh, to be with him? Uh, it says when we come together, not if we come together, but when we come together. Uh, the Bible says, and all who believe were together, day by day attending the temple together. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together. Uh, assemble the people, the Bible says, uh, men, women, and little ones, that they may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God. How good and pleasant to dwell in unity together. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, that we must, have, must be together to have that. Uh, it's God's command, like I said, uh, and it's for encouragement. And if we had read on in Hebrews uh, 10, 25, it would have said that we come together to encourage one another. So why do we have the topic then, or why do I have the topic then, when being at church causes God grief? And I want us to think about that today and uh, look at the verses from Isaiah chapter 1, verses 12 through 20 and think about that topic, even though we know that we ought to be in church. Our verses uh, we find like this. When you come to, to appear before me, God says, or when you come to church, who has required this from your hand to trample my courts? Bring no more futile sacrifices. Incense is an abomination to me. The new moon, Sabbaths, and the calling of assemblies I cannot endure iniquity and the sacred meeting, God says. All those were prescribed by the law of Moses for them to do. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hates. They are a trouble to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands or when you come and praise me, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, this is what God tells them. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be uh, as wool. And then... This last part, if, he says, you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured like the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. He says, if, but the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Uh, so when is the Lord grieved when we come to church? I want us to think about that today. And the first thing is this. When church attendance becomes a formality, uh, can't we get so used to something uh, that it just, we don't even notice it being there or noticing something that's there. And I think, uh, some of you may disagree with me, but we're outnumbered anyhow, that men may be a little bit more prone to continue to walk by something and not notice it, you know. Uh, uh, and, and, it, and somebody might ask us, what, what picture is right over there? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't remember what's over there. But things can happen to where 
They don't even mean anything to us. Such as saying the blessing. How many times have we said the blessing and we say the same things over and over again to the point that, that sometimes, and I know this has happened to me, when I, when I think about praying, the blessing comes to my mind because it's so natural that we say the same things, it almost becomes a formality. Uh, praying, you know, sometimes we, we pray and we allow the things around us, the thoughts that come into our mind to, to uh, hinder what we really want to and need to be saying to God. Singing hymns to God and praises to God. And I say this many times, we need to be careful the things that we're saying to God in the songs that we sing because they have meaning there. But yet we'll sing those songs sometimes, I think, and it, 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 it seems like it doesn't, uh, we don't think about what we're actually saying uh, when we're singing those. I thought I heard that piano make a noise. You heard something too? What'd you leave over there, Lynn? Yeah, I think I think it's my I'm afraid to turn it off. There's so much going on. <laughs> All right, let's get back. Uh, coming to church, you know, coming to church can get to just be a formality for us without having the meanings that we need to have when we come to church. Uh, reading scripture, you know, we need to really think about reading scripture and. And I know when I have taken uh, uh, preaching classes and so forth, and I'm sure Brother Stephen went through the same things because we went to the same place and we probably had some of the same professors, but they stress the fact that scripture reading should be just as important as what we say, or probably more important. And we need to give uh, their due, due diligence in, in giving them the credit that we need to give to God for giving those scriptures to us so that we can have them. Uh, but sometimes uh, we're reading it and not thinking about what we're, what we're saying. Sometimes we read it just to get through, just to maybe satisfy ourselves that we did it, but we need to be careful. Uh, these are things that I think God was talking about trampling the courts, his own courts. Sometimes it seems uh, to be such a formality without real substance that we forget the real meaning that we ought to have in those things. God was grieved with those in Isaiah's day, and he said this in Isaiah 1.12, when you come to appear before me, who has required this from your hand to trample my courts? In other words, he's, he's saying to them, you can bring all the sacrifices you want in here and you can come before me however many times a day you want and you can bow down to me and you can raise your hands to me and praise. You can do sing the hymns to me all you want, but your lives are not reflecting what you're saying when you come here. So it's something that, that I, he said, I, I really don't want to hear it. So coming to church is not supposed to be like going to a sporting event. Amen? Amen. It's, we're supposed to be participants and not just spectators. Now, as Brother Stephen mentioned the last couple of weeks, we, each and every one, have something to give. And we ought to find what that is. Uh, God gifts each one of us. And we need to understand what our part is. Yes, those roles can change as time goes on. And you know, as we get some age, sometimes we have to maybe give up some things, but we, we don't have to completely give up. And uh, I said this at Pat Jobin's service the other day. I remember going and seeing her daddy at the nursing home in East Macon. And although he was in a wheelchair and he was in the nursing home, he still had a good mind and he went from room to room. And he was encouraging people and he was praying for people and he was talking to understood some of them probably didn't have any idea what he was saying but he was still doing a ministry although he was there in a nursing home so yes it, things can change as we go through time but we need to always understand 
what God has for us individually and as families and as a body of believers. And we ought to always try to find what that is. And like I said, sometimes it does change. Uh, I know in my own life, from the time I was young to, to I was in my 20s and 30s and on up, things have changed as to what God has, has placed in front of me for me to do. And, and we, as God's people, ought to try and figure out what that is. It may be sending cards to people. I know a lady in the church, I won't mention Susie's name, but Susie sends a lot of cards to people. Amen? And she always does that. And Susie is in a situation now to where she can't be an encouragement as such in some ways that she might have been in the past. But Susie's been in this situation probably, I would say, around 20, 25 years now. And she's still an encouragement to people. And that may be something that she don't see as important. But I, I, I get cards from Susie all the time. Uh, she don't forget my birthday. She don't forget these other things. Yes, ma'am. Talking about her being an encouragement. In the next few days, we need to be one to her. Her birthday is coming up the 16th. And her anniversary is the uh, 14th, I believe. Mm -hmm. And they had planned to renew their wedding vows this year. And like I say, it's hitting her hard. Tough on her. Absolutely. But, but she is an encouragement to a lot of people. And she may not think of it as that. But, but we need to find ways that we can use the gifts that God gives us. And they change as time goes on. Sometimes we're forced to do those things. We have to, 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 do, to do different things. Uh, but when we come to church and we, we see others doing things and, and nothing seems to transform us or nothing seems to happen different in our lives, then we have to understand, am I trampling God's courts? Am I just being a spectator or am I being a participant? Uh, God was saying you're making a mockery of worship in my house and I don't like it. It's like walking by something like we said and it becoming almost a formality. Uh, now, I just told Kat the other day a couple of times she wanted to change the different things. I said, if you want to change them, we'll change them. But for me, everything's fine. I don't need to change anything. I don't need to move this over here and over there. I don't need to put a picture over here instead of this one. I don't need to do anything because everything's fine with me. But when we are talking about worship, then maybe sometimes we need to change something a little bit so that makes us think better and makes us pay more attention to what we're doing. You see what I'm saying? All right, we have to think about that uh, as we come together like this. Never forget, coming to church, crying tears, singing songs, being baptized, looking the part, all those things are good, but if that's all we do and we have no repentance, no love, no genuine worship, no mercy, no grace, no forgiveness, then we may have to ask ourselves, are we trampling the courts of God? This is what God's word says. Whatever your spiritual gift is, use it. You need to use whatever it is. If you love to talk, and some do, then talk to people on the phone, call them up. What are you looking around for? <laughs> then you can, you can call and stay in touch with people. Amen? If you don't like to do that, if that's not your thing, then you can send a card to people. Or you can, you can talk to people and ask. I know some of you ask me, or you'll call me and ask me, have you seen, you may not know the person's name, have you seen the man that sits right down there around the third row or something and he, he, he usually wears this or something? Have you seen him lately? Because I hadn't seen him. Well, that's a, that's a part of what, who we ought to be and to, to make sure that we're, we're, we're staying in touch with people. God's word says he distributes these gifts to us as he determines. And that's for me to use and you to use. God's, God gives these to his people. So whatever gift it is that God gives you, 
take it and you use it. Uh, just a few verses that I mentioned to let us know all this. There's a second thing I want us to think about, about grieving God when we come to church. When church attendance makes us prideful. When church attendance makes us prideful. Uh, you remember the parable Jesus told, I'm sure, in Luke 18 about the Pharisee and the tax collector. This is sort of a summation of what the Pharisee said in, in Luke 18, 11 through 12. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. It was like he was telling himself how good he is. He said, God, I thank you that I am not like an, uh, other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector, I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all that I possess. This person was, I think, trying to confirm to God how good he was and how much better he was than this hated tax collector that was there. And he was, the Bible says, praying with himself or to himself to let himself know how good he really was. And we have to be careful coming to church that we don't think we're better than those that maybe not come into church or maybe those that come to church and, and don't do anything. I have people, or I used to have, I don't know I have too many now, but I used to have people to ask me, uh, what's going on down the street down here at this church? You heard what's going on? I say, look, I got enough going on here. I can't keep up with what's going on down the street. If I hear something, I'll let you know. But understand, we ought to take care of our own things and not so much worry about what's going on down the street. It's a fact that if we are not careful, coming to church can make us like the Pharisees, thinking that we're better than everybody else. And just like this person that was praying to himself and talking about how much better he was than others. Uh, Jesus returned to Nazareth in Luke chapter 4. Uh, he spoke of the miracles done outside the Jewish race. And they proceeded to want to kill him. Uh, they were thinking, who are you to make us think that somebody besides Jews are able to stand before God and be somebody. And we have, we have that today, don't we? We have it sometimes from denomination to denomination, from group to group, from, from, from class to class. We, we have it uh, a lot of times when we, when we ought to be focusing more on ourselves than on other people. Uh, pride of thinking that we're better than other people. Uh, I think that's also what Jesus referred to about the Good Samaritan. You remember the re religious elite? Uh, they, the Bible says they uh, walked by on the other side. And the hated Samaritan did what we should be doing, what they uh, should have been doing. God was calling out to them in Isaiah's day, if you're obedient, this is going to happen. But if you're not, this is what's going to happen. Third thing, Jesus is still calling out, follow me. Is he not? Every day he calls out for us to follow him. I'll never forget back through my life the things that have happened. I know when I was saved, uh, but I know I was not faithful. And I know that uh, uh, I ended up in bed for two months with major back surgery. And I did a lot of thinking while I was laying in a bed. <laughs> And, and I did a lot of promising too. And I know after that, I, I, I talked to a lady at, at Lawrence Drive Baptist Church about maybe helping in some way in Sunday school. And she said, you can teach youth. And I said, Miss Ruby, I'm not even in Sunday school. I can't be teaching. She said, I want you to go in there for a few Sundays and just see why. I felt God led me to do that. Uh, and I promised her and I promise them, I don't know everything there is about the Bible, but I will study hard every week. And if there's a question I can't answer, I'll try to find it for you. And it moved on from there to other things, to other things. And I still believe with all my heart, he cries out to me, follow me and do this. Isaiah 
chapter 1, verses 16 through 18 that we read a few moments ago. God said, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. We, we confess our, sin, our sins and he's faithful and just to cleanse us uh, of our unrighteousness. Uh, and and we, we, we need to know that. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. In other words, repent of your sin. Cease evil. Do good. Seek justice for all. Rebuke those who, who oppress. Defend the fatherless. Turn your evil ways into good. I believe with all my heart, God is still calling us today. Amen. Amen. He's still calling. Not just individuals, but families to follow him. Churches to follow him. Sunday school classes to follow him. D-Live groups to follow him. Uh, every one of us, uh, the things that he's called us to do, we need to do, and we need to always be listening because he's always calling out for maybe us to be doing something different. Amen? And I can think of people in our church that have had responsibilities down through the years, and sometimes those things have changed. Uh, uh, Brother Carl was saved uh, here with us, and he then went to uh, uh, being a deacon, being a Sunday school uh, uh, teacher, and, and all the rest of y'all. Anne has done many, many things here. I don't want to leave anybody out, but I know I'm going to. Uh, Lois has done many things. She's been a part of many, many things that's, that's gone on here. Uh, Verlin and, and Otis. Uh, what, Verlin helped Otis doing the deacon responsibilities that he had. All, all of us have our responsibilities. We don't want to leave out Emily Tompkins. She's always behind the scenes doing something to help us out. And all the rest of us. Amen. And those of you that have come late later have done a lot of different things to help us out. And I, I don't want to leave any of you out, but all of us have done, done parts. You know what you've done. Uh, you know, the prodigal son felt like everything was going to be better if he just left home. God had what, he was, what was his and left home. But he found himself in a bad situation, wallowing in the mud with the hogs. Uh, and it says that he came to himself and realized how good he really had it at home. And he didn't know if, God, if his father was going to take him back or not. But, they, but we know his daddy was standing there waiting for him to come, ran to him, hugged him, kissed him on the cheek, and made a big celebration for him. I hear this, Irene, we'll pray in a moment. And then that's representative of God. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know where anybody else is at that sees this or hears this. But sometimes we think there's no hope for us, and sometimes we think there's no hope for other people. Amen? Amen. We may get prideful even sometimes. But we have to remember that God is there for us, and he's waiting like the father of the prodigal son. And he's waiting so that he can watch for us. I suppose the daddy must have been watching every day for him. And when he saw him way out there or far away, he ran to him. God is waiting, regardless of where you're at in your life. He's waiting, and he will run to meet you, and he will embrace you and restore you and put you in some type of position that will be a ministry to other people. The Bible says, are you weary and heavy laden? God will give you rest. Are you that prodigal today? He asks you to come home. Are you in some type of sin? Forgiveness awaits you. Father, we love you and we thank you so much for loving us. And we thank you that we have the opportunity and freedom in this country to come to church, to come to a place of worship. We know, Lord, that we are the church, the body 
of Christ. But Lord, we have these places that we assemble ourselves together in. And we pray, Lord, today that someone has been touched by this and Lord, that, that their life may be changed. And Lord, there's so many that are sitting in what seems to be hopeless situations, not moving forward, not gaining uh, the understanding that you would have for them spiritually. Lord, I pray today that that would change. We do pray for this siren, this emergency we heard. We have no idea what it was, but we know that it means an emergency, and we pray, Lord, that all would be well with it. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen and amen.